What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna be showing you five effects that you should use in DaVinci Resolve. This is a podcast that me and my wife do. I'm just using it as an example. But uh, for the first effect I wanna talk about is the uh, adjustment clip. So if you come over here to effects and you go all the way to the top, you can see adjustment clip. So I use adjustment clips all the time. And it's something I would say, if you start using them, you will see why you should <laughs> use them all the time. So let's say like I have this main shot here. Um, and I do have these other clips here that we can cut to that like we have close ups. But when we used to do our podcast, we didn't have uh, multiple camera angles. So what I would do would be to take two different, uh, two different adjustment clips and I'm gonna change the color on them so they stand out. One's gonna be for one uh, subject, the other's gonna be for the other subject. So let's say I wanted to go to a close-up. Like I said, I didn't, let's say I didn't have this angle, but I wanted to get a close-up just with this main shot. What I would do is program what I wanted it to do like this. Slide it around and it's just pushing a lot. So that would be one close-up. And then I will come over here and do the same thing. And that would be the other close up on my wife. But now what this allows me to do is copy and paste these throughout the entirety of the video. This could be how you could make multiple camera angles and cuts. All right, so another effect I'm gonna show you is the drop shadow effect. Now, in some cases, like let's say for example, you, you were using text like a simple you know, text effect or something like that in like titles and you just use basic, it would have uh, it would have a drop shadow built in. So you could go over to the title, uh, scroll down here to drop shadow and you could adjust it and do things like that. But uh, one thing that happens is when you're messing around with the uh, fusion title effects that they have built in, it doesn't have that. So what you can do if you still want to create a shadow because it doesn't have that as an option to do. Uh, all you got to do is come over to your search. I believe it's actually an open effects. And just type in drop shadow. Or just type in drop and it'll pop up. Drag and drop it. No pun intended. And now you can see here you have the drop shadow as an effect uh, on your text. And you can blur it and you know adjust it and do whatever you want with it. You can add it to anything really. So let's say... Uh, you had a video and let's say the video wasn't filling the screen. So let's say it was like a 16 by nine or was smaller. Or let's just say you're just doing something. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I have no way of knowing what you're doing. But let's just say you want to grab a solid color. A solid color. Uh, I have solid color programmed already as one of my favorites. So I'm just going to grab it real quick. And I'm going to change the color to white so we can see what we're doing. And now I'm going to go grab the, I have drop shadow programmed as well. That's one of my favorites. Boom. Another effect I like to use a lot is in the inspector panel under composite in its composite mode. So if you're dealing with assets, especially like in music videos, we have a lot of layers and things. Normally you could, I guess typically you could just grab different effects. Like uh, I have this uh, dust and scratches pack uh, that I, that I downloaded and from, from tropic color and you could just do opacity on it but i like using script like different composite modes and you can kind of like see what it does to it because it has different effects and does different things i think i had screen on um and like a, so let's go over here actually i think this is a little bit better of an example uh where was it it's towards the end here which i was going crazy yeah. What's causing this look is the film burn I have on it. So the film burn is not just the film burn on top, because if it was just the film burn, if I had normal, all you see would be, would, would be the film burn. And then if I wanted to see the clip underneath, I could go opacity. And that's one way to look, look cool. You know? look but I'm getting these really cool looks from messing around with the composite mode settings. And I, that's why I definitely suggest doing that instead of dropping uh, something on top of something else and then using the, the opacity slider so that way you could see what's underneath. I would definitely suggest trying composite. Uh, another way you could use it is, let's say you wanted to use it with text exclusion. So it has this cool effect that it does where it's like, I guess, you know, pulling certain colors out. You wouldn't just get that from doing a regular normal and then pulling past it down 
you, you don't see that effect happening. But when you go into composite mode and choose exclusion, that's when you can see some different things. The, the next one I'm gonna show you is the transform effect. When I use the transform tool, I like to use a adjustment clip along with it. You don't have to, you could drop it right on the clip. I wanna be able to move the animation around without it being stuck to a certain part of the main clip, if that makes sense. It's in open effects, type in, start to type in transform. And you can see it here, grab it, drop it. All right, so now it's on the clip. But the reason why I like this is because it comes built in with animated motion blur. If you do it just right, you can create quick zooms with motion blur built in without having to go through the hassle of uh, grabbing uh, a motion blur tool, putting it on and having to distort it by hand and then having to manually keyframe the motion out. All you got to do, I'm going to just make it simple. So I'm going to start it here. And then we're gonna go in. I want it to last like five frames. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm gonna zoom in to where I want it to go. And then I'm going to move my position in so I can frame it up how I want it. Like that. So that's where I want it to stop at. Now I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the adjustment clip. And I'm just gonna double click on everything to reset it back to the starting point. Now with the animation, we can crank our uh, motion blur up. So it starts the motion blur knows, okay, when there's motion happening, I'm gonna blur it. And that's what I like about it. Cause it's like, you could keyframe it if you wanted to do that, but you don't need to, cause it knows that there's motion happening. All right guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And if it was, leave a like and be sure to let me know in the comments below what effects you're going to be using. Subscribe if you want to see more DaVinci Resolve tips and tricks like this. And until next time, peace.